Welcome to the DD1324 online lectures. In this lecture, we'll cover high-level languages, compiled languages, and interpreted languages. In the last lecture, we saw how machine language runs on a computer's hardware, and how assembly language is a slightly more human-readable form of machine language, where each instruction is a one-to-one -one translation to machine code. For many years, people wrote code directly in machine language, and then in assembly language. This was very difficult because any mistake in low-end code, like this, can have unexpected and catastrophic results. This was the motivation for developing so-called high-level languages. High-level programming languages are strongly abstracted from the details of the machine architecture. They are designed to, designed to be closer to human language. They are supposed to be easier to use, and they may, they may include, include natural language and mathematical elements. They automate or hide areas of the computing system, such as memory management. They're largely machine independent. They require fewer lines of code to do the same job. They enable faster development, and they support sophisticated data structures and operations. These are all good reasons to use high-level languages, but high-level languages also have some disadvantages. First of all, they must be translated or comp compiled into machine instructions to be run on the computer. They come also with an abstraction penalty, which means they produce less efficient code. Generally, the higher the abstraction level, the less efficient the code. When C was written in the 1970s, it was considered a very high-level language. In this diagram, we can see that in 1980, languages like Fortran, C, and Pascal were considered high-level languages at the time. Today, when we think of high-level language, we think of languages like Java, Python, Ruby, or Perl. Many programmers nowadays might refer to C as a mid- or low-level language, as it lacks a large runtime system, it doesn't do garbage collection, and it allows you to address memory directly. Most modern computer languages protect you from doing this. As we now know, high-level languages must be translated or compiled into machine instructions to run on the computer hardware. Here we can see the source code for a simple C program to add two integers, 10 and 4. Below we can follow the code through all the stages of translation, how it appears in the original C source file, how it translates to, to assembly code, and how that translated assembly code appears as machine language here in hex and here in binary. This is how it looks where it resides in your computer's memory. Now, do you have an idea what the binary sequences here in bold represent back in the original source code? Here we've revealed that the bold binary sequences correspond to the value 10 in red, the value 4 in green, and the addition operation in magenta. We can follow the 10, 4, and plus operation through all the stages of the code. Here we can see the value 10 in uh, hexadecimal in machine language, here we can see it in the assembly, and here we can see it in the original source code. In the assembly code, here we can see that first the 10 is moved to a memory address, and then it's moved from the memory address to the register EDX. 4 is also moved to a memory address and then moved to the register EAX. Then EDX and EAX registers are added, and the result is moved to another memory address. There are two main ways for a computer to execute high-level code. The first is to convert the code in using a compiler into an executable image, like an .exe file on a Windows machine, and this contains the binary machine instructions which is run on your computer's hardware. That is how the C programming language works. A second way is to use an interpreter program to directly convert your high-level code into machine code. In Python, for example, you ran programs by typing Python and then the code you wanted to run. The Python interpreter would just run them and import any other libraries or things you needed on the fly as it ran. With compiled languages, you first write the program source code in a high-level language and then give it to a compiler which translates it to a machine-level language executable. Then you can run the result as a completely separate step. This produces machine-specific executables often called binaries, which are which are in machine uh, which contain machine code. The compiling is a slow process and it must analyze and process the entire program at once. But the resulting executable file is often very fast. In contrast, interpreted languages uh, translate the code while the program is running. 
You write the high-level source code and then instruct an intermediate program called the interpreter to run it. The interpreter runs the program by translating each line directly before executing it. The source code is translated line by line and run within the interpreter. The code is run immediately and less spent as time analyzing and processing the entire program, but overall execution is much slower. However, interpreted languages allow for interactive sessions. To help explain the difference between interpreters and compilers, we'll use this animation from a classic 1983 television series called Bits and Bytes, produced by TV Ontario. This video is licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution License, and you can find the attribution and source in the video description below. When you land in the world of computers with their strange, convoluted machine language, it's a bit like landing on another planet whose inhabitants speak an equally strange, convoluted alien language. Getting a mechanic on planet Gobbledygook to repair your spaceship would present the same sort of problem that you have when you want to get a computer to do something. Everything you say has to be translated. And you have a choice between two different sorts of translator. One of them is called an interpreter, and the other is called a compiler. Let's suppose that you've previously written out your list of instructions for the repair of your spaceship. And suppose that you choose the interpreter to do the translating. He reads your first instruction, open lid of rocket engine, translates this into gobbledygook, and immediately passes it on to the mechanic who executes the instruction. Then the interpreter reads your second instruction, remove spark plug, translates this into gobbledygook and passes it on to the mechanic who executes it. And so on and so forth. Now, notice how the interpreter works. He stays with you all the time and he translates each of your instructions immediately one by one. This is a rather slow process because the mechanic has to wait while each instruction is being translated. But on the other hand, it does give you a chance to correct your mistakes as you go along. If the mechanic removes the wrong spark plug, for instance, you'll see this happen right away, and you'll be able to change your instruction accordingly. Compare this with the way the second sort of translator, the compiler, goes about his work. He takes your complete list of instructions, and without further ado, translates the whole lot straight into gobbledygook. He then hands them back to you and goes away, leaving you all on your own. All this has taken some time, but from now on, things will go very fast. You hand the complete list of gobbledygook to the mechanic, and he executes them all in one go. Bang, bang, bang. There's no waiting about this time. But there's one disadvantage to this, of course. If there was a mistake in your instructions, it's too late now. This analogy comes very close to the way the interpreter and compiler translator programs actually work with computers. An interpreter runs slowly, starts right away, and lets you see how things are going. Whereas a compiler takes extra preparation time before your program can run, but then lets it run very quickly and efficiently. To help you remember the difference between an interpreter and a compiler, look at the words themselves. Inter means between. The interpreter is always between your program and the computer, and it translates line by line. To compile, on the other hand, means to pile together. A compiler piles together your entire program and translates the whole thing all at once. Which one you use on Planet Gobbledygook is entirely up to you. So to summarize, the source code may be converted into an executable image by a compiler or executed immediately with the aid of an interpreter. C is an example of a compiled language, while Python is an interpreted language. Next, let's look at an example where we compare the execution speed of C against Python. The specifications of this example will be to write a simple C program that adds two random integers in a loop one million times, and then write the same program again in Python. We will run each program and compare the time it takes for them each to run. So we can begin 
by, by using the shell to open a text editor where we can type our program. So we'll use the, the text editor sublime and we'll call our program million.py. So we'll start with our Python program. Uh, I forgot, when you start the um, when you start the Sublime Editor, you can put an ampersand after the command line, and this will allow you to interact with the shell afterwards. So, uh, we'll begin the code by importing the, um, the random package, and then we'll make a, uh, a counter variable i, and now we'll start a while loop. So while i is less than 1 million, now we'll make a random variable a and we'll assign it a random number random dot rand int and we'll give uh, the the range 0 to 32767 this will make sure that we have the same random numbers or the same range of random numbers between c and python to keep things fair and now we'll um, add the two random numbers together store them in C and we should increment our counter variable and then finally we can do a print statement at the end so we know that we finished okay and we can save our program and now we can make a similar program in C so let's uh, so let's save it, we'll call it million.c. Okay, and we'll begin by uh, a couple include statements. So these will add the libraries that we need. stdio.h, stdio.h, and now we'll make the main loop. You'll learn about this in a future lecture. Um, and now inside the main loop, we'll make um, once again our counter variable, integer i, and then we'll make uh, integer a, we have to initialize them all, integer b, so these will be the storing the random numbers, and then integer c, this will be the one that stores the results of the addition, and now we can make a for loop. So, and here we loop from 0 to 1 million. So, there's probably some details about this code that you won't be able to follow exactly, but we'll learn about it in, in the future. This is more just a demonstration of the difference between the two languages. So, here I'm, I'm um, adding the, or making the uh, random variable assigned to A and B, and now we can add A plus B. So that's the main loop, and then we can add a print statement at the end. And we return a zero. Okay, and now our, uh, now our C program is finished. So now we can go back to the shell, and we can run this program in Python, and we can also use a uh, uh, so to run the program in Python, we would type python million.py. <clears throat> but we can also use a shell command called time to see how long this takes. So we can do something like this, time pyth python, uh, python million.py. And so this will run the code and time it and see how long it takes. So here you can see that it took about four seconds in real time to run that code with uh, adding one million random integers. So now let's do the same thing with C. So we can't run the C program directly, we have to compile it first. So we call the compiler GCC and we tell it the source file, million.c, and we tell it uh, the target, which is going to be uh, this executable. And that compiles the program. So this went really quick because it's a very simple program. Now we can time the execution. So the executable is now uh, the a file called million and it's written in machine code and now we can run this by uh, and time it with the time command just the same as we did for the Python 
and here you can see that it took 0 0.019 seconds, so se several orders of magnitude quicker than the uh, than the Python code. So you can see really here, uh, especially in the case of a lot of loops, that there can be a very clear advantage to using uh, compiled languages over C -lang or over interpreted languages. This concludes our online lecture for high-level languages, compiled languages, and interpreted languages. Thank you for watching.